Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make a fluffy lemon cake. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I am sharing a recipe that has been highly requested. This lemon cake is so soft, so fluffy, and so full of real fresh lemon flavor. We're not using any lemon extract. All of our flavoring is coming from real lemon today. Now the first thing you should do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and let's get started. Now, for today's cake recipe, I'll be using all granulated sugar. You're going to need one and three fourths cup, and we'll add this to a large mixing bowl. Now, I like to use a blend of both oil and butter in my cakes, so we're going to start with half a cup of canola oil. Any neutral oil will work, so you could use vegetable oil instead. Next, you'll need four tablespoons of unsalted butter. Now, you want this to be softened so that it will easily combine with your ingredients, but not so soft that it's melty, because if it's too melty, it's when we go to cream everything together, you're not going to get the bubbles that form, you're not going to aerate the batter properly, and then your cake won't be as nice and fluffy as it really ought to be. Next, we're going to be adding three tablespoons of fresh lemon zest. So we'll go ahead and zest our lemons. And I'm just doing this on a piece of wax paper, so the wax paper is a nice clean surface that'll catch all my zest. Now, anytime you're zesting a lemon, you want to make sure that you avoid that white papery layer that's just above the actual fruit of the lemon. So what that's called is the pith, and it's actually really bitter. If you zest that, your cake is going to taste bitter and not lemony. So you need three tablespoons of lemon zest total, and I found this usually takes me about three lemons. Don't get rid of your lemons after you've zested them because we're going to be using fresh lemon juice in this recipe as well. I'm always so jealous of people who can grow lemon trees on their property. We don't have the climate for that here. Not unless I wanna take the plant inside during the winter and keep it actually alive. I'm not really good at that. When I was pregnant with Luke, we filmed like four lemon videos in a row and I did it because I heard that the smell of lemon was good for morning sickness completely backfired. I could not stand the smell of lemon until about a month ago. It was awful. All right, let's see what we have here. There's one, and I am a little bit generous when measuring my lemon zest. Two. All right, three. Make sure I get all of that out there. Don't want to skimp on your fresh lemon. All right, now we're going to cream all of our ingredients together, and I highly recommend you use an electric mixer for this step. You could use the stand mixer today. I am just using my hand mixer. We'll be adding two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and I'm using clear vanilla today just because if you use the brown vanilla, it can slightly tint the color of your cake. It's not a big deal, but I just like to use clear for this lemon cake. Stir this in. Okay, so we'll set our butter mixture aside and we're going to want to grab a separate bowl for our dry ingredients. We're going to be starting with three cups of cake flour. Now, if you don't have cake flour, I will include notes in the recipe so that you can substitute all-purpose flour instead. Add a tablespoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of salt and we'll whisk these together until they're nicely combined. Now we do have another step before we can begin combining everything. You're going to want to measure out two thirds cup of whole milk. And to that milk, we are going to be adding a third cup of fresh lemon juice. So grab those lemons that you just zested. And I like to just squeeze directly into the cup until I'm at the one cup line. We're almost there. We're not quite at the one cup line. It's really important to always get down at eye level to make sure you're actually where you need to be whenever you're measuring liquid ingredients. Okay, now we're good. And I like to just use a spoon to gently stir together the milk and the lemon juice before going any further. And this mixture is most likely going to start to curdle. That's completely fine. This, you might remember, this is how I make buttermilk as well. So the curdling is completely normal and it's a great ingredient to add to any cake. Though I usually don't use quite this much lemon. All right, put your electric mixer away at this point because we are going to be stirring by hand from this point on. If you use your electric mixer, you run the risk of overbeating your ingredients and ending up with a dense dry cake. Don't do that. So I'm going to alternate adding my dry ingredients and my milk mixture to this batter, and I'm going to start and end with the dry ingredients. And then I'll just use a spatula to gently fold that flour mixture into the butter mixture until it's mostly combined. And I'll add about a third of my milk mixture. I know it's not very pretty, but it's supposed to look that way. Don't be scared. Back to the flour. We'll just repeat until all of the milk and all of the dry ingredients have been added. 
Okay, so you're probably thinking we're ready to bake our cake batter now, but you're forgetting one key ingredient, and that is our eggs. So much like my white cake recipe that I recently shared, this recipe only uses egg whites. It helps make a really light, fluffy texture, no yolks needed. Now you're going to need six egg whites for this recipe, and I already have these prepped because I made a lemon curd for the center of the cake yesterday. A batch of lemon curd uses six egg yolks. I saved my egg whites. I'm just going to add these to a clean, completely dry, completely grease-free bowl. And it is so important whenever you are working with egg whites that the bowl and the beaters that you use are clean and dry and grease-free because if they're not, or if there's even a tiny bit of yolk in with your egg whites, then your eggs are not going to whip to stiff peaks. And that's what we're going to be doing right now is beating these eggs until we have nice, thick, stiff peaks. Okay, I don't know about you, but I was getting a little worried these were not going to fit in the bowl. Okay, so it takes several minutes to get your egg whites to stiff peaks. It probably took me about five minutes, and that's using a pretty high-powered mixer. So I'll probably shorten it in the video, but if you've gone two or three minutes and your eggs aren't at stiff peaks, keep going. They should get there. Now, this is how they should look. You can see the little peaks that have formed. They don't fall back in on themselves. It's a very thick mixture. You shouldn't have any liquid at the bottom of your bowl. Now I'm going to add this to my batter, and I do add the egg whites all at once. You don't want to do the egg whites first. I like to save the step for last because if you do it first, they'll start to deflate, and then you're not going to be adding all of that nice fluffy volume that you are supposed to be adding to your cake batter. Now we just spent all that time fluffing up these egg whites, so you want to be very gentle with your spatula while you're combining everything together. Do not use an electric mixer at this point or you'll just undo everything we've just done. Make sure you're scraping the sides and the bottom of the bowl as you go. You just wanna keep going until you can't really see any of the egg whites. Everything's been nicely combined and you have a fairly uniform batter. So you might be able to see teeny tiny bits of egg white but overall the batter is nice and uniform. So now let's go ahead and bake it. I'm going to be using two eight inch round cake pans. I have greased the sides of the pans with baking spray and I always line the bottoms with parchment paper unless I'm feeling really lazy or really risky because it takes all the stress out of it when you go to invert your cake pans. They will never stick to the bottom if you use parchment paper. Now just evenly divide your batter between the two prepared pans. Not really great at eyeballing this and getting everything even. A lot of times I like to use my scale to make sure I have an even amount of batter in each cake pan, but we'll see how this goes. All right, we'll take these over to our 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven and they'll need to bake for about 30 minutes or until the toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean or with a few moist crumbs. Let these cakes cool in their pans for about 10 to 15 minutes. Then you'll wanna grab a butter knife, just run it along the inside of the cake pan I know we greased the sides, but this is just some extra insurance. Be careful because the pans are still going to be really hot. We will carefully invert them onto a cooling rack to cool completely. And look at that, because we used the parchment paper, no sticking whatsoever. You want to wait until your cakes have cooled completely before you ice them, otherwise you'll have a soupy mess on your hands. But once they have cooled, we can go ahead and make our frosting. Now for today's cakes, I'm going to be using a whipped, very light cream cheese frosting. If you want something a little bit more stable, you can use my cream cheese or my buttercream. I have a whole library of recipes you could check out. Now I'm going to be starting with 3 fourths cup of cold heavy cream, and I'm going to add this to a large bowl. We're going to need a total of one cup of powdered sugar for today's recipe. I'm going to be adding about half of that in with the cream right now. Now you can just eyeball it, about half is perfect. Now you're going to need your electric mixer and we are going to beat the cream and sugar together until you have stiff peaks. Okay, so we have a nice fluffy whipped cream here. We're going to set that aside, I'll grab a separate bowl, and we're going to combine four ounces of softened cream cheese, Make sure this is a full fat brick of cream cheese. Do not use the spreadable kind that's sold in tubs because that will not work for this recipe. Add the rest of your sugar, 3 fourths teaspoon of vanilla extract, and just a pinch of salt. And you can use the same beaters because we're going to be combining everything anyway and stir everything together until it's creamy and well combined. Now we'll fold our cream cheese mixture into our whipped cream mixture. 
and I start by folding everything together with my spatula and then I'll usually end with a quick mix with my electric mixer. If it seems like there's not a lot of icing here, it's because there's really not compared to what I usually use. This is going to be uh, making a nice semi-naked frosted cake. Now, once your cakes have cooled, we'll wanna go ahead and grab those and carefully place them onto your cake platter. Now, normally I use a nice pretty cake platter, but I'm going to be sending this cake home with my mom who has been watching Luke today so that I can film these videos. So I'm just doing it right on my portable cake carrier. Now, if you'd like, you can level this cake. It's not completely flat, but it's close enough that I'm just gonna go with it today. One of the best parts of this lemon cake is that I like to fill the center with a fresh lemon curd. Now, you'll need about one cup of lemon curd and you could use store-bought, but like I mentioned earlier, one batch of my lemon curd uses six egg yolks. This cake uses six egg whites. Make the lemon curd a day in advance or the morning in advance, and then save those egg whites for your cake. A batch of my lemon curd makes about double what you need. Just save the rest to enjoy by the spoonful or use in another recipe. Now, before I can add the lemon curd, I'm going to take my piping bag that I've put some of my icing in, and I'm just going to pipe a dam around the edge of the cake. This is going to keep the lemon curd from spilling out the side when you put the next layer on your cake. Now I'm going to spoon about 3 fourths cup to 1 cup of lemon curd on top of this first layer. Just spread it evenly. You know how your mouth waters when you smell or see something that you know is like nice and sour, sour in a good way? That's what's happening to me right now. I'm just gonna add a little bit more. And now we'll carefully place our next layer. And because I like to do a naked frosting, this is going to be a really quick icing job. I like to use a thick layer of icing on the top and then bring some of that down and lightly apply it around the edges, holding my spatula right up against the actual cake and kind of scraping it around. All right, so I know I'm giving this cake to my mom, but I have to show you guys what it looks like inside. And of course I want a slice for myself. So let's take a look. Ideally, we would chill it a little bit first. That will help make the icing a little bit more stable, keep the cake from kind of falling apart, but I don't have that kind of patience. I think you guys are going to love this super lemony from scratch cake. And don't forget to make my homemade lemon curd first. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm -mm. It's good.